So I got sent a message on Twitter where a person asked me about the LASIK surgery that I had on my eyes uh, around a year ago now. I was interested why they were asking and they said, well, recently there was a, a viral video saying that LASIK is the devil, the worst thing goddamn imaginable. It turned out to be this video released by Cody Detwiller from Whistlin in Diesel. This is his second channel. His main channel has like every video getting nine to 10 million views. I, I don't know much about him, but he's apparently a big deal. Watching this video, it was the most obviously over-sensationalized propaganda video, poorly researched thing I've ever seen. And it surprised me when watching it how positive people were, how many likes it got. There were even people in the comments where they were like, oh, I had actually had uh, completely positive experiences with LASIK. Like many comments like that. But then they would end by saying, oh, but I had no idea it was actually this bad. I got so lucky, I had, I had no idea. So problematic did I find this video that I ended up writing a bit of an essay on it. But I don't have time to make this into a video. So I thought I might try something new here, which is like, I'll read this and I'll get the people who edit for me on the Ramble channel to sync up what I'm saying with stuff from Cody's video. I'm not very good at reading scripts, which you're, which you're about to find out, but uh, let's just see how we go. A new thing, you know? So Cody's video starts with a bunch of fear mongering, scary music with flashing headlines. My name is Cody and I'm making this video to expose the extremely unethical but legal practices that LASIK eye surgery companies are performing on people across the United States, leading to people going blind or committing suicide. Everything that I had heard about LASIK eye surgery was positive. There would be some comments from people saying that it was a little crazy how they did it, how you know they would cut your eye, and I guess that should have been a big enough red flag. I'm making this video to address something that is extremely unethical and should no longer be legal which should probably immediately bring up some red flags for you, as obviously what is important is not a headline written by some random person, but the actual content of an article. Cody goes on to point to the fact that one of the people involved with getting LASIK approved by the FDA over 25 years ago, a person named Morris Waxler, no longer supports LASIK surgery. He however doesn't mention that the only thing Morris Waxler is known for is not supporting LASIK. It is his claim to fame. Even the person who endorsed it from the FDA actually doesn't approve of it anymore. How this is still legal, I have no clue. I can't even find how old he is, simply that he is retired and is probably like 80 going by the few videos of him I can find. Morris Waxler has held his stance against LASIK for at least 15 years, so you can find actual practicing doctors speaking and rebutting his crazy statements back when he first started making them. So Robert K. Maloney. LASIK was approved by the FDA under Dr. Waxler only after the procedure fulfilled all the agency's safety protocols and guidance documents. Now Dr. Waxler is discussing the safety of LASIK based on his recollection of data that he reviewed 10 to 15 years ago. Now understand, that's 10 to 15 years ago, back in 2010. These same numbers that are being cited now, which Cody also cites in his video, were not based off data from 2024. They were not based off data from 2020. They were based off data from like the 1990s. These data do not reflect the improvements that have developed as a result of 15 years of technological advancements. Again, that's not 15 years, that's almost 30 years of technological advancements at this point. Since Dr. Wexler left the FDA, his successors have authorized an additional 28 LASIK approvals and clearances upon thorough review of studies involving thousands of eyes. It is fair to say that few procedures in medicine have received as careful scrutiny or as many approvals by the FDA as LASIK. Again, this is back in 2010, this is all being said. Additionally, Dr. Wexler has confused the discussion by combining severe safety-related problems and subjective complaints such as dry eye under the general heading injuries. This uses subjective complaints to inflate the number of overall complaints. It results in a disservice to the millions of patients whose lives were changed for the better by LASIK and to the relatively few patients with problems who deserve to have their conditions clearly understood and effectively treated. This sentiment is expressed by everyone in the know towards this guy. So why did I bring this up? I am tending to point out that Morris Waxler isn't some cutting edged unbiased source examining the newest procedures, studies and data but a retired guy with a PhD in something not disclosed anywhere, who had nothing to do with the development of this technology, whose stance, reference statistics, and views have not changed regardless of what new information has come out or how the actual surgery has changed since LASIK was first approved. This is not a serious source. It is, however, the main source that Cody uses for everything he says. A massively discredited quack whose only claim to fame was saying, yeah, I think LASIK isn't good based off something I remember from 30 years ago. Nuts. As we go on, you'll understand why Cody cares so much about this dude, other than that he's like the only person saying these kind of things. Cody throughout his video states that he believed he would be 100% recovered with 20-20 vision within 24 hours of his surgery. This is insane. People saying that they got it, it was quick, painless, took about 30 minutes. They went home, went to bed, and woke up with perfectly fine vision the next morning. That's what I expected. 
uh, with a certain tolerance, of course. So, you know, if, if it didn't go perfect, that I would still be able to see perfectly fine as soon as everything cleared up. There were three types of laser eye surgery. I received the newest, least invasive one called Smile. While I was told I could do most things like normal after a few days, I was told to expect my vision to fluctuate in clarity for weeks and that light sensitivity during that time was also expected. I was even given a regimen of three different types of eye drops to use for three weeks. Cody apparently got the most invasive form of surgery due to having particularly bad eyesight, so it is strange that he expected instant miraculous healing. Throughout this video, Cody presents outcomes that he should have entirely expected, such as temporary light sensitivity, as evidence things were going horribly wrong. Someone else has to drive you home after this, you're not good to drive. So you wear a pair of sunglasses and this big plastic shield that keeps you from bumping into your eyes. At this point, if you were to bump your eye or rub your eye, uh, you would open the eye flap back up or permanently rip off that part of your cornea, making it so that you could never see again. And I went home for the recovery, expecting to wake up the next morning with 2020 vision. He even puts scary music over these explanations. If you watch his video, know that effectively every single thing he describes after the surgery should not have surprised him had he read literally any material about the surgery. At one point he is like, I woke up the next day with worse vision than when I started with. The next morning, 13 hours later, I woke up, took off the plastic, mask, took off the blindfold, and then opened my eyes. And it was not 2020 vision. It was not clear vision. The vision was actually worse than what I started with. Yes, you had a surgery on your eyes, and they specifically say that is a likely outcome. Anyone who has had any surgery for anything, not done by some back alley doctor, will attest that doctors do tell you what to expect during and after surgery. It is entirely possible Cody just had a bad doctor, but Cody is arguing that his experience is not only the norm, but evidence of a shadow cabal of doctors working to hide the truth of how dangerous LASIK truly is. But since there's overwhelming positive evidence, it leads me to wonder if this might be biased from articles written by LASIK eye surgery companies wanting more business, considering they make almost $5,000 per customer or $40,000 per day at this. How dumb do you have to be to think every person who has ever performed an analysis on the efficacy of laser eye surgery for the past 40 years personally was profiting from the service? That is not how regulatory agencies work. Again, it's this shadow cabal of doctors blinding people for money. Cody at one point says his doctor barely informed him, saying it would just be a painless surgery that just works. They basically told me that it would work and that the soonest appointment was this certain date and then I could come in and get my quick painless surgery and I'd be on my way with, with 20-20 vision. My consultation was an hour and a half and the doctor not only read me through many pages of information but showed me videos and answered any questions I had. I don't have all the documents at this stage but I still have links from the emails. So this is like about my procedure this was sent before along with a bunch of other materials a bunch of pieces of paper but this is like a, just a broad summary. This before my procedure same thing and these are videos by the way like videos in which you, you can watch and, and that explain information. So there's one after my procedure these are all the different things that they told me to use at different points. Sometime after I did actually find what they gave me uh, after my first consultation. So there's this two sided piece of paper that's uh, essential points to understand before laser vision correction smile. The overwhelming majority of patients who have the surgery are extremely pleased with the result. However, patients undergoing the procedure should be aware that no surgical procedure is risk-free. The chance of having a serious vision-threatening complication is very much less than 1%. Two pages of potential complications. This is how surgeries go. All surgeries have some possibility of complication. No surgery is perfect for 100% of the people who undertake it. And interestingly, something I forgot is mentioned here. You'll be advised of your first post-operative visit upon discharge. This can be either on the same day in the afternoon or the following morning. I forgot that the day after I went back so they could check up on my eyes to make sure everything went perfectly. I guess I went to a competent institution unlike that guy. So obviously I'm not gonna read all this, but I was given quite a lot of information and they were very open about possible complications and as the research shows, and as they admit, the odds of some complication is very low. But when you have millions of people taking a surgery, that will still be a fair number of people. Because again, no surgery would be 100% perfect for literally everyone at all times for the rest of time. It's impossible. Understand, this isn't some guy in these videos. It is the surgeon who operated on me. Like this guy, it isn't, isn't like some, some dude that they found off Fiverr. This is the dude who operated on my eyes. 
I was given a range of likely outcomes in regards to my vision and told to expect discomfort and light sensitivity afterwards. Cody Hover acts like doctors the world over are secretly money hungry trolls, keeping information from people until the very last minute, which is insane as information kept from the patient increases the likelihood of complications, which would not only be a cruel thing to do, but would represent a risk for the doctors themselves. Cody on one hand is arguing that doctors world over are fueled by greed to the degree that they would jeopardize patient health, but he is at the same time also arguing that doctors are specifically doing things that will increase the likelihood of negative complications. I think it's not a very far reach to consider the fact that corporations may be introducing biased information to get people to do procedures that they don't actually need or want that may not be in their best interest for financial gain. These views are incompatible as even doctors inspired by greed would work as hard as possible to avoid complications as complication free procedures are the most likely to bring forth good word of mouth marketing and a willingness to do other procedures. At one point he shows a form that he suggests his doctors gave him, but Googling shows it is from some insurance company. He goes through what is essentially a legal form laying out every possible issue imaginable regardless of how likely, which if you have ever read a legal form is what they all do, especially from an insurance company. Every surgery has a similar list of potential complications that are listed in the same way, but Cody avoids this context to present LASIK as unique. He also at times crops relevant information to change the meaning of the text. I understand that it is not realistic to expect that this procedure will result in perfect vision. I understand that the correction that I can expect to gain from LASIK may not be perfect. I understand that it is not realistic to expect that this procedure will result in perfect vision at all times, under all circumstances, for the rest of my life. I understand I may need glasses to refine my vision for some purposes requiring fine detailed vision after some point in my life and that this may occur soon after surgery or years later. Obviously how much your vision can improve depends on the person having the procedure and what type of procedure they are getting. Your vision will also naturally degrade as you get older. This procedure improves your eyesight, it doesn't correct aging. But this passage along with the others are presented as some nefarious thing. My mother has had LASIK as well. What she got was entirely different to me because she is 20 years older than me. Neither of us have had any issues. What is incredible to me is how much of the video is just images of surgery presented as if what is being done is somewhat abnormal. Every single surgery looks scary, especially when you put scary music over it. Showing graphic imagery of a surgery doesn't exist to inform people, it exists to try and scare them with what they don't understand. Moreover, rather than informing his viewers of the different procedures that exist, who gets them and why, he exclusively describes the most invasive, oldest version of the procedure. Later on, Cody is going into intense detail about how they are cutting cornea nerves with dark, spooky music. Keeps your eye open, and they basically held my eyelid back forcefully with this tool. So there is no possible way to close your eye. And then they proceed to suction cup a plastic device onto my cornea for the machine to lock onto. So after a couple of attempts, they successfully suction cup this piece on, and then they lower the machine down onto my eye and basically cut my eye open with a scalpel. I know it may shock some of his younger viewers that in surgery they traditionally do surgery, but Cody seems to emphasize this as much as possible as if this was somehow a revelation. As an aside, here is a comparison between the older version of LASIK and the newer. Not everyone can get the newer version, it depends on your particular issue, but you can see the obvious difference. So this is what Cody got, because his eyesight was just particularly bad. This is what I got. This is my incision. And Cody's like, man, they're, they're, like, like, they're like ripping off your flap and pulling it back. No, they're, they're, they're not in, in a lot of cases. Like that's, no. Cody talks about how the doctors didn't know how big his eyes were and that there was maybe only one size for the device they were using. They tried to get the plastic mounting piece to suction onto my eye. According to the doctor, it was not fitting properly, but as I understand, there are only a couple sizes of these, if not just one size. There doesn't seem to be any justification for why any of that would be the case. When I had my surgery, they measured my eyes like three times. They took impressively clear pictures of every aspect of them and showed them to me in their explanation of my eyes. This seemed quite important for the procedure. No doctor is going into a surgery wanting to be ignorant of what they're operating on, as no surgeon wants to fail, regardless of what is motivating them. Later on, he just starts speculating that a lot of people have had the same complications he has had, but you just don't hear about it. Uh, at this point, I don't know this, but my eye is all bloodshot from all of the blood vessels just breaking from them pushing on this. 
And this is something that has probably happened to many people, but you just wouldn't know about. He is basing this on absolutely nothing. It is an example of the fallacy in reasoning called the law of small numbers. We can understand in theory that an event may be millions to one, but when it happens to us, we want to jump and extrapolate it, saying this must be happening to everyone everywhere. Rare events happen, and they happen countless times each day. They can happen to any of us. The problem Cody has is that the average person has no reason to keep this information from their friends, and Cody admits that what he traditionally hears from people are positive experiences with LASIK. So I asked a bunch of friends and, and looked up information on the internet of experiences of people who have gotten LASIK before. It was mostly positive. I'm sure he just thinks all our friends and families are just being paid all over the world by Big Laser to keep this information hidden. He later on talks about how when he got scared of the normal outcomes for his procedure, perhaps due to his irrational belief of a 24 hour perfect recovery time, he starts massively overusing eye drops and Googling information, which is insane as why wouldn't he just call his doctor? There's a really bad like itching sensation on your eyes, but you can't touch your eyes. So I started to use the eye drops about every hour because of how dry my eyes were. I started to Google on my phone how long it takes to see again after LASIK eye surgery and most examples I was seeing take one to two days. So by the time I hit three or four days, I started really worrying if I would get my full vision back. It is entirely possible his issues after the fact were due to his wrongly following post-surgery procedures. Near the end of the video, he says he can't go outside without sunglasses if it is a sunny day. It's now been one year since my LASIK eye procedure and my eyesight is quite comparable to when I was using contacts but with several drawbacks. I'm 100% reliant on sunglasses. I cannot go without sunglasses if it's a sunny day. And if I do, my eyes are in extreme pain. It'll give me a headache. But he is constantly in the sun in his main channel videos. It is possible he is just overstating his issues for his video or in his videos, he is just very selectively edited. But regardless, apparently his issues are not so debilitating. At one point, he says that the idea that a business would pay $500 for referrals shows that there must be something nefarious behind laser eye surgery. I also have firsthand experience of friends saying that they were offered $500 vouchers if they could get other friends to come get LASIK from the same doctor. I think this is something that shouldn't be happening. Not only is he attempting to condemn the entire global medical world on the basis of his friend's experience with one practice, but a 10% commission on a referral is not unusual and is something we as creators are offered frequently. If you successfully bring us business, we will give you 10% of what we charge. It's not a sign of some dark underbelly of corruption, it is just a standard business practice. It is insane that Cody, as a YouTuber, would not have the self-awareness to see that he would personally look at a 10% commission deal as an insultingly low offer. He concludes by asking, how does the FDA allow this to be legal if it has a 30% complication rate? The fact that the FDA allows a procedure that could completely inhibit your ability to ever drive or function again at night should be illegal. Obviously things can go wrong, any procedure could have complications, but something with a 30% complication rate on the most important part of your senses. Firstly, he puts 10 to 30% on screen and picks the high end. Secondly, these are numbers exclusively endorsed by Morris Waxler that he appears to not only have inflated by including benign temporary issues, but that seems to be based on very old data that he has repeated for decades without change. Current studies put rates of complication at around 1%, but that isn't even permanent complications, as even these traditionally resolve over time. It also isn't just the FDA that approves of LASIK, it is every single regulatory body on the planet. No country bans LASIK because it is one of the most performed, most understood, most highly rated elective surgeries. Cody concludes by saying that despite his beliefs, there appears to be overwhelming positive evidence for LASIK surgery. Therefore, there must be a global conspiracy to fake data and silence critics. This position is not only insane, but Cody seems to forget that just regular people have told him that they have had good experiences with LASIK, and that if one third of people had significant complications with LASIK, as he believes, he probably would have heard about it at some point from those people. Showcasing Cody's bias is his support of Morris Waxler, the former FDA guy. Cody knows nothing of what motivates him or what data he based his conclusions on, but he asserts anything he says as fact, regardless of how unsupported or against consensus, because he is stating conclusions that Cody wants to believe. Cody is not unemotionally attempting to find the truth, but just believing anyone who says what he wants to hear. One of the most baffling parts is that Cody says he wishes he had just stuck with contact lenses. It's now been one year since my LASIK eye procedure and my eyesight is quite comparable to when I was using contacts, but with several drawbacks. Cody, the same sorts of people doing laser eye surgery are profiting off contact lenses, which are a recurring payment model that you have to continue to buy for your entire life. There are horror stories of people getting eye infections with contact lenses, suffering permanent damage, even going blind. 
Where is Cody yelling about the secret cabal of doctors keeping people from the truth of contact lenses? The answer is that like with LASIK, they don't exist. The difference is that Cody had a bad experience with LASIK, not contacts. Rather than just accepting it to be a bad experience though, he has decided to extrapolate it into a cover-up to hide the truth, despite there being absolutely no evidence of this by his own admission. Imagine being like, man, these doctors are just out for money, bro. They're charging five grand. I'm gonna go back to uh, every single year giving people who sell contact lenses like 500 to a thousand dollars or some shit. Like, <laughs> they're definitely in no way motivated by money. Bottom line, Cody's video is garbage, sensationalist, conspiratorial, and fear-mongering. This is true irrespective of whether or not Cody's claims are partly true in that he either went to an incompetent doctor or got unlucky with his surgery. This video doesn't seek to inform, but bait people with fear of the unknown. All surgeries have the possibility for complications, but my advice is to talk to a medical professional about the risks. Don't assume that every doctor is just trying to blind as many people for money as Cody does. That is batshit insane. Cody has fallen victim to the well-known psychological bias of people's desire to assume their own experiences are more universal. Rather than just accepting that he got unlucky, Cody has searched online for any quack or poorly sourced information to tell him what he wants to hear and has in his arrogance and ignorance spewed this into the world. This does nothing but cause harm and he should be ashamed. What's funny is that this video is somewhat coming on uh, off the back of Mr. Beast's video where he cured the blindness of what 100 people are saying, doing cataract surgery. People will celebrate that, but at the same time, mass thumbs up this video and be like, oh, oh th those guys that were curing blindness in Mr. Beast's video are actually quacks just trying to blind people with money? Oh, I had no idea. It's nuts. So we'll see if this can be edited into a video that can work. As I said, I, like, I don't have the time to make videos like this. Like I recognize that every single day, thousands of videos like this are made that spew complete bullshit misinformation into the world. And if all I did was try to refute them, that's all I would do. I just have to accept that this is just stuff that is going to exist. But if it's possible that me just reading a script into a camera, I can have someone else edit that into something workable for the YouTube algorithm, then maybe I can make more of these videos. As bad as I am at reading a script in general, at least this will be workable, you know? So basically, Cody guy, bare minimum, very arrogant, completely unaware of the general tendencies of psychological bias that we all have. Stop! Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.